Hey everybody, thanks for joining me today. Um, in this lesson, we're gonna learn about measures of center. We're still in chapter nine here, talking a little bit about statistics. And our learning target for the day is I can find the median and mode of data sets and understand the concept of measures of center. All right, let's start by defining a measure of center so we can know where we're headed. A measure of center is a measure that describes the typical value of a data set. The mean is one type of measure of center. So that's a that's what we found last section in 9.2. Um, and remember, the mean is like the average. Here are two others. So one of those is the median. Okay. The median is essentially the middle value. I want to circle or star that. Sorry, I did a bad job of, of circling that. Let me erase that. The median is the middle value. Maybe I should highlight it. There we go. It says, to find the median, order your data. For a set with an odd number of values, the median is the middle value. For a set with an even number, the median is the mean of the middle two numbers. So for example, if this was our data and we had an odd number of values, one, two, three, four, five numbers, that's an odd number. It's really easy to find it because you just work your way towards the middle, a low and a high, and your middle value is nine. If you have an even number though, so you have one, two, three, four, five, six numbers, when um, you're ordered from least to greatest, if you cancel out the high and the low and the high and the low, you'll notice you're left with two numbers. Well, then the median is the mean of the middle two numbers, or the average. So you add them, 5 plus 7 divided by 2, so that'd be 12 divided by 2, which is 6. Well, you can kind of see that here. 5 and 7 are our middle values. Well, what's between 5 and 7 on a number line? Well, it's 6. So, But it's not always that cut and dry. It's not always that easy uh, to figure out. You know, if you're say your two middle numbers were 43 and uh, 57. You're like, well, what's in between those two? Well, you can easily just add the, add the two together and divide by two or find the average of them to, uh, to find the median. So the median is the middle value. Rem remember, order your data least to greatest. That's, that's important. The other measure of center, so now, so we've talked a little bit about mean last section, which is the average. You add up your data points and divide by how many there are. The median, which is the middle value when your order, when your data is ordered least to greatest. Or the other type of measure of center that we could talk about is the mode. And the mode is the data set that occurs the most. That's how I remember it. Mode, M-O, most, M-O. The mode occurs the most. Data can have one mode, more than one mode, or no mode at all. When all values occur only once, there is no mode. So in this case, for this set of data, <clears throat> there 15 is listed twice and 24 is listed twice. So in this case, there are two modes, 15 and 24. Sometimes you'll have no mode and sometimes you'll have one mode. Uh, we'll, we'll do those examples here coming up. All right, so it wants us to find the median and the mode um, of the different bowling scores here. You'll see that um, what they did is they took the scores here and they ordered the data for us. Remember, that's our first step. Order least to greatest. And they did that already for us. So thank you, Book, for <laughs> taking that upon yourself. Least to greatest. There should be two, four, six, eight, ten data points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, we got them all. So when we find the median, we work our way towards the middle. So I cross out my lowest and my highest, and I just keep going, working my way towards the middle number. And you can see here they also 
<coughs> colored in for us, color coded the middle two numbers. So we have 135 and 145. Well, when you have two numbers that, that are your median, you find the average of them. So you'd have to take 135 and add 145, and to average them, you divide by 2 because there's two numbers. Okay. Once you do that, you would come up with a total of, let's see, that'd be 280 over 2, which would be 140. So the median or the middle number is 140. Now that makes sense. If you go five up this way and you go five down this way, you're at 140. You, you work your way towards the middle. And uh, second, the mode. Um, is there a value that occurs uh, more than once? Is, is there a mode here? And hopefully you've seen it now, 160 occurs twice and all other numbers occur just once. So 160 is our mode. All right, now there you have it. Why don't you go ahead and pause the video now to do the median and the mode of these two on your own problems. All right, median for number one, you should have come up with 12. And the median for number two, you should come up with 95. Mode for the first problem is 95, uh, excuse me, uh, 20. Median is 12, mode is 20, 20 occurs twice. And the median, we already figured it was 95 for number two. The mode, what occurs the most here, uh, there's no mode. There are no numbers that occur um, more than once here, so there's no mode. Let me know if you have questions or don't be afraid to ask a friend either. In example two, it says finding the mode. The list shows the favorite types of movies for students in a class. So comedies, horrors, actions. Organize the data in a frequency table and then find the mode. So remember a frequency table uses tallies. All right, so I'm gonna make myself a table here. And I'm gonna categorize my table. Um, I'm gonna say the type of movie. And then I'm gonna use tallies to count and then lastly frequency how many times did that pop up and I have how many different types of movies do I have I have action I have comedy there's drama and horror oofta that one would not get my vote. I'm a big security cat when it comes to horror movies. All right, anyways, let's tally up our totals and see what we come up with. Action, we've got one, two, three, four. Did I miss any? Oops, five. Okay, so tallies one, two, three, four. Five. Remember always on the fifth one, do that diagonal one so it's easy to count. Comedies, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is what I'm counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Dramas, one, two, three, four. I see four, two, three, four. And horrors, lastly, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
And then from there, it wants us to find the mode. So which one of these occurs uh, the most often? Which one received the most votes? Uh, that would be comedy. Uh, the mode is comedy. One of my favorites, too. All right. Uh, go ahead, pause for example three. Alrighty, it says one member of the class was absent and ends up voting for horror. Does this change the mode and explain? Uh, yes, it does change the mode. And because now comedy and horror both uh, have the same amount, um, and that would make it to eight. So that would change the mode, and both comedy and horror would be the modes now. Right in example three here, which um, we got a few more to go today, a few more examples. It says find the mean, median, and mode of the sneaker prices and which measure best represents the data. All right, so the mean is the average. Um, again, when you're calculating mean, don't be afraid to use a calculator. So I'll take 20 plus 31 plus 122, you know, just add all of these up. When you do that, you come up with 388 and divide by how many shoes there are, four and four, so divide that by eight. The mean price would be $48.50. The median price, so when I list these from um, cheapest to most expensive, I've got it. Two $20 pairs, I've got a $31, a $37 pair, a $45 pair, $48 pair, $65, and $122. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, that's right, there's eight pair of shoes. Okay, I'll find the middle number, work my way towards the middle. So one big, one small, one big, one small. I'm left with Two middle numbers, so 37 plus 45 equals uh, 82 divided by 2 because there's two numbers. Gives me 41 for my median. So I've got a median price, I've got a mean price, and then a mode. Is there one that occurs more often than the others? Um, the mode, yep, there's two of that cost. $20. So here's my three data points or my, th my three measures of center, best measure of center. I've got 48.50, I've got 41, and I've got 20. And it says which measure best represents the data. So which one of these numbers best represents this data? Well, I think you can uh, first start by seeing that um, the mode of this data is a lot less than any of the, the other data. The mode is 20, uh, and I don't think that's a very good representation of most of my data here. That's lower than a lot of the other numbers. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna toss out the mode right now, saying that that's that's not a very good representation of my data. Now I have I have it limited down to the mean and the median. Which one of these best describes my data and, and how can I figure that out? Well, one way that, I've, that I think helps is to make a dot plot to be able to see, our, see your data. So I'm just gonna quickly do that here. I'm gonna make a dot plot to see where is most of our data. And uh, I got 20 for a price and I, I go all the way up to 122. So I'm gonna go by tens, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120. And I'm gonna plot my different points. So I've got uh, two 20s, I've got a 31, I've got a, a 37, I've got 
uh, 45 and 48, so almost 50. Uh, I got 65, so here's 65. And I've got a 122, wow, all the way over here. And then I'm trying to decide, does my median, which is at uh, 48.50, so around here, uh, my mean, which is around 40, which would be right here, or my mode, which is around 20. We've already eliminated that same. You know, there's we've got data all across this. This one far to the left doesn't represent, best represent it. We've limited it down to these two choices. Which of these two dots would you say is more representative of these blue numbers or the X's that I marked? And I would argue this this middle one, this median, because that represents some of the low numbers that I have and also some of these, these higher numbers. And that's a kind of a good middle ground. I would say the median best represents my data. And um, again, that's because the mean is greater than one, two, three, four, five, six of these shoe prices. So I would I don't want to take the average because six of my shoes are cheaper than that. So most of my um, data revolves around the median, which is that $41 mark. So the median is the best representation of the data. All right, pause the video now and do four and five on your own, kind of the same way that, that I broke these down. All right, number four for the mean, you should get 67.25. The median, you should arrive at 51.5. Uh, and the mode, there is uh, none, there's no mode. And which one best represents the data? Again, I chose median here was the best representation of my data. It's closer to more of the data because the mean is influenced by my outliers. And we saw that in this problem too. There was one outlier or one number that was a lot bigger than the rest. And that made my average a lot bigger too. A lot of times, or I might write this down if I were you, if there's an outlier, uh, the median tends uh, to be the best representation of uh, your data. I'm not going to say every time, um, but a lot of the times when you have an outlier, a number that's a lot bigger or a lot smaller than the rest, your median tends to be your best representation of your data. And for the, the second one here, number five, whoops, the mean or the average should come up with 110. The median, you should arrive at 99. And the mode is 150 occurs the most. And in this one, again, I'd say the median best represents the data because the mode is the greatest and the mean is also greater than most of your other data. So again, um, I'm gonna go with, with the median. Um, I, th I think 150 looks like the outlier and there's two of them. So I'm definitely gonna go with my median. All right, in example four, uh, it talks about removing that outlier. So you saw that an outlier can really affect your average in the last couple problems. So uh, example four says, uh, identify the outlier in example three. Well, uh, we, we, we did that. It was, it was at $122 shoe. That was a lot more expensive than all the other shoes. This one uh, right here. So identify the outlier in example three, all right? The, the outlier was that $122 shoe. <clears throat> it says find the mean, median, and mode 
without the outlier and which measure does it affect the most? Okay, so um, now I'm gonna take my data from here and I'm going to take this out essentially, right? So um, I'm gonna make myself kind of a chart here. So I'm gonna say with the outlier and I'm gonna say uh, without the outlier. So I can compare my data. So I've got the mean, the median, and the mode. I've already calculated my mean, median, and mode with the outlier. Um, for, for example, three, my mean was 48.50. My median was 41 and my mode was 20. Now I'm going to go ahead and calculate my mean median mode and I'm going to take out my outlier. So let's go back to my data. I had two $20 pair of shoes. I had a 31, a 37, a 45, 48, 65. And now again, I'm taking out my 122. So I'm not going to include that. What is the mean? of my data here, okay? So I gotta take 20 plus 20 plus 31 plus 37 plus 45 plus 48 plus 65. And then I need to divide that by how many shoes? Well, in this case, <clears throat> the number of shoes that you have goes down a pair because we took out the outlier. So when I add these together, I get uh, 266 and I divide that by now it's seven pair of shoes because I took the outlier out so 266 divided by seven gives me an average of 38 how about the median right cancel out my big and my small from each <clears throat> from each side work my way to the middle and I come up with 37 and then the mode it's still 20 that you can see the mode is not affected in this in this problem. So the question asks, which measure does the outlier affect the most? Well, uh, the, the mode, it doesn't affect at all. The median, there's a difference of four. There's no change here. There's four here. And the mean, there's a change of 10, 50. So, wow, that's, that's a big change. You can see that the, um, the mean or the average is changed the most. So which measure does the outlier affect the most? The mean or the average, it has a big impact on. All right, go ahead and pause the video here for um, the on your own for number six and see what you come up with. Alrighty, hopefully you arrived at the following. 45 is the outlier. Um, with the outlier, so with your mean is 18. The median is 12.5 and the mode is 10. Without Without, the mean uh, is 12.6, the median is 10, and the mode is 10. So mode isn't affected at all. The mean is affected by 2.5, uh, or the median is affected by 2.5. You can see the mean here is affected the most by uh, five point four-ish. So um, again, a lot of the times your outlier um, affects your mean the most. Not every time, but a lot of times. Okay. <clears throat> All right, we're going to end with the last example for today where it says changing the values of a data set. 
So the word problem is the prices of six video games at an online store are shown in the table. The price of each game increases by $4.98 when a shipping charge is included. That makes sense. Usually shipping is a little bit more. How does this increase affect the mean, median, and mode? Make a new table by adding $4.98 to each price and then find the mean, median, mode of both data sets. Okay. So, um, actually here, uh, I think I do have um, that already done for you. So, um, all you need to do is, is calculate the mean, median, and mode here. So, um, okay, Ben, come on back. There we go. So here's your prices, and then here's when they add the shipping charge. So you'll see 498 plus this amount equals your total now. Essentially, all they did is they added 498 to each one of those video game prices. It wants you to make a new table by um, finding the mean, medium mode for from the original compared to the price uh, with shipping. So I'm going to say the original versus a price with shipping. Again, and then from there you want to find your mean, your median, and your mode. Okay. Well, our mean for the original, add up these prices and divide by six, you'd come up with a total of 35.77. Your median, ordered least to greatest, and then find the average of the middle two is 31.83, and your mode will be 53.42. There's two of those prices. Now with the shipping charge, your mean now increases to 40.75, your median increases to 36.81, and your mode increases to 58.40, right? How does this increase affect the mean, median, mode? Well, you can compare. What is the difference in prices here? What's 40.75 minus this, um, this 35.77? So I'm going to compare. I'm just going to find the difference. In other words, I'm going to subtract the two. For the means, when I subtract them, I come up with there's a difference of 4.98. And... That makes sense because that's how much our shipping increased. The difference here is 498. The difference in our mode. It's no shocker, it's 498. Okay, so by increasing each video game price by that 498 for shipping, the mean, median, and mode also all increase by 498 every single time. All right, go ahead and pause the video here for the last example of the day. All right, for uh, the On Your Own, on number seven, it says, uh, the store decreases the price of each video game by $3. How does this affect the mean media mode? Well, if you picked up on the last example, uh, the mean median and mode will all decrease by that three dollars. All right, hopefully uh, you're able to make some correlations here between mean, median, and mode and measures of center. If you have more questions, as always, please come ask me. And that does it for 9.3.